Did you ever know one of those kids, or maybe you were one of them, that growing up they just drew and drew? The kind of kid that can turn a kitchen into a makeshift art gallery. The kind of kid you knew just had to be an artist. Well, that was Ruth Asawa, and then she got thrown in jail. So, let's talk about it. Art lovers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Christopher West, and this is a place where we can talk about modern and contemporary art and design. But the truth is, we haven't talked much about design on this channel. So today we're gonna to talk about one of those artists that kind of blurs the boundaries. If you haven't heard of Ruth Asawa, it's probably because she's been lumped in with those artists who create craft. And for some reason, craft has traditionally been looked at at a level or two below what we consider fine art. And when I say for some reason, let's be honest here. Craft was seen as an unusually welcome place for women's creativity, which is a tough place to be in the male dominated art world of the mid 20th century. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. Ruth Asawa was a Japanese American who grew up in California in the 1930s. A practicing artist from the time she could hold a paintbrush, Asawa reached the top of the mountain for 13-year-olds when in 1939, she won first prize in her school's arts competition. The piece was about what it means to be an American. Then, along with 40,000 other children, she would be sent to one of the many internment camps that were set up in America's misguided attempt to prevent Japanese Americans from committing sabotage on U.S. soil although no such act was ever committed. Good job, USA. Japanese Americans from all walks of life were confined here. Farmers, merchants, and animators from the Walt Disney Studios. And young Asawa used this time to draw and to learn from those artists who had turned the grandstand in this relocation center into makeshift classrooms. Thankfully, at the time, there were people and organizations that recognized the injustices that were happening to Japanese Americans. And one such Quaker organization, called the Japanese American Student Relocation Council, was able to give her a scholarship so she could leave the camp and attend college in Milwaukee. She had hoped to be a teacher, but many jobs were prohibited to ethnic Japanese, regardless of their citizenship status. But during her studies, she would learn of this mythical place, this grand experiment where thought leaders like Albert Einstein, Walter Gropius, and Carl Jung would sit on the advisory board. A place that, protected from prejudice and racism by its rural isolation, succeeded in creating a safe environment where individualized education was possible. In that place was Black Mountain College in North Carolina. Its progressive ideals put the practice of the arts at the center of the curriculum and made students responsible for their own education. And this allowed them to experiment, to collaborate with other artists at the school. You might have heard of some of the other artists that attended and taught at the college in their short 24-year history. Willem and Elaine de Kooning, Robert Rauschenberg, Joseph and Annie Albers, Jacob Lawrence, Merce Cunningham, John Cage, Cy Twombly, Kenneth Nolan, Franz Klein, the list goes on and on. And it was Joseph Albers whose teaching would have a lasting impact on Asawa. Albers taught discovery and invention. And until the end of her life, she often described her work simply as an experiment. Albers encouraged his students to develop radical new ways of seeing the world and to use materials in non-traditional ways. And it was in 1947 when she began to develop her signature style. On a trip to Mexico, a craftsman from Toluca showed her how he made egg baskets by looping wire. She began to experiment and would come to elevate this looping technique from functional basket making to works of art. Her sculptures incorporate shadows and enclose the space without masking it. Another teacher would arrive at Black Mountain College in 1948 and have a profound impact on her work, Buckminster Fuller. He would attempt his first construction of his geodesic dome there that summer. And when we look at Joseph Albers' lines and Bucky Fuller's maps and domes, we begin to understand what Asawa took from the school would impact her entire career. 
It was Black Mountain College that gave her the courage to become an artist and the creed by which she would live the rest of her life. It is the responsibility of the artist in his artistic voice to challenge society, to influence its culture, to shape its future. And after leaving Black Mountain College, Asawa would exhibit extensively from California to New York, but her exhibitions weren't always well received. Remember, she was a Japanese woman trying to create a name for herself in the 1950s art world. One critic wrote in Art News in 1956, these are domestic sculptures in a feminine handiwork mode. But she wasn't discouraged. Now living in San Francisco, she still believed it was the artist's responsibility to shape and influence culture. So she co-founded the Alvarado School Arts Workshop, a program that helped insert professional artists into the public school system. She began lobbying politicians and foundations to support arts programs that would benefit young children. And she would make public sculptures and fountains in and around the San Francisco Bay Area. And she also continued to exhibit her work at galleries and museums. But for much of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, these exhibitions were limited to her home state of California. She clearly had an impact regionally, but was widely ignored by the broader art world. It wasn't until museums and other major public institutions woke up and realized that their exhibitions and their collections were made up of work mostly by white males. So a re-examination started to happen. Museums began to wonder what artists had been looked over by art history. Who were the artists that because of prejudice or bias had been ignored? Osawa passed away in 2013, and by all measures, she seemed to have lived a happy and fulfilled life. For decades, she would make the work she wanted and engage with the community she so loved. Her and her husband had six children, and they remained married until his passing in 2008. But it wasn't until after her death that the work started to get the attention it deserved. In 2017, the David Zwerner Gallery, one of the most important galleries in the world, began to represent her estate, and later that year presented a major exhibition of her work. Currently, her work can be seen in a solo exhibition at the Whitney Museum of American Art, with a survey that looks at her work through the lens of her lifelong drawing practice. And that exhibition continues next year at the Mental Drawing Institute in Houston. And her work is now in the permanent collections of many important museums, like the Museum of Modern Art, the Getty, and the Guggenheim. And, as I'm sure you can imagine, the market for Asawa's work has followed this same trajectory. Her large hanging sculptures now trade in the millions of dollars. And the drawings can sometimes approach six figures. Regrettably, I lived not far from Ruth for many years and would visit her neighborhood often. I would frequently pass by many of her public sculptures in San Francisco. But I too often kept walking, too distracted by the makings of the hot new 20 to 30 year olds making work throughout the Bay Area. If only I had taken more time to appreciate an artist that had been having an impact for decades. And that's all I've got for you today, folks. I can't express enough how much I appreciate you following me along on this YouTube journey I've started. If Asawa's work interests you, you might also like the work and the sculptures of Louise Bourgeois. I did a video on her and I'll put a link right up here. And if you haven't done so already, it really helps me out a lot if you like this video and subscribe to this channel. I've got a few more ideas on the works, so stick around and I hope to see you on the next one. Ciao.